let me quickly tell you so when we talk about this innate immunity adaptive immunity right these are two major kind of immune system we discuss in terms of three four things and that i usually write it here so that specificity towards a pathogen okay then type of diversity in which receptors or molecules they have it to take care of these pathogens so i yeah so specificity diversity self and non self recognition and fourth is memory okay and if you see that innate immunity and then your adaptive immunity this side i would say that innate immunity has your some kind of a barrier physiological barrier anatomical barrier biochemical kind of barriers okay so these are the barriers and this is how the pathogen cannot enter on other hand if i say adaptive immunity the specificity is extremely high okay for that particular type of pathogen the response will be mounted in a highly specific manner okay that we will discuss after three four lectures so kind of very high and here it is not there then the diversity so b and t cells they have receptors and b cell receptor can be a remarkably high number okay so let's say i if so if i say you you can produce 10 to power 13 number of antibodies so you see how many zeros we have okay so your power is remarkably high so diversity here it is again extremely high self non self our immune system usually we are all healthy the reason is that our system is able to recognize self versus non self that's why i would say this very good even our adaptive immunity it is very good if we have a response against ourselves we would be in trouble memory it is very high here memory cells are formed the pathogen comes after 30 40 50 years and those memory cells can again recognize and tell okay this is the pathogen we encountered that decades earlier and let's mount a immune response so very high almost not there okay now just pay focus to your specificity and diversity so specificity diversity so these are kind of a barriers so anatomical physiological barriers and kind of, so not very specific okay so pointer options all right okay so not very high right if we have a skin yeah it blocks but it blocks everything so specificity is not you know very strong it recognizes oh this bacteria is good this bacteria is bad let's stop it so i just left this part empty now then i talk about some antimicrobial proteins or antimicrobial peptides so during evolution the easiest thing came first okay so overall innate immunity came first because even in plants we have this outside layer which protects plants so that is a part of innate immunity then they started making some kind of a small small peptides and couple of peptides they make protein so earliest they made some kind of immunity which was based on antimicrobial peptides okay so defensins histatin dermicidal like that okay so they are also found in us today okay so plants have it we have it but then we mammals we even evolved more and today we have antimicrobial proteins okay so these proteins we have it are they specific yes they are specific so if you see this example of one antimicrobial protein which is psoriasin it provides immunity against e coli and found in the skin so see the place it is different specificity it is different other thing is on other hand one thing which is produced in our gut this is calprotectin so calprotectin gives immunity opposite against staphylococcus aureus not against e coli 
and its expression is not consistent. So if we have a, some kind of inflammation in our body, the level increases, okay. It is not key. immunity is always working in like a very high fi mode, okay. We don't want to invest that much energy. So quickly, then this is kind of a slide where if a pathogen enters, what happens? So there is a breakage of this barrier, a pathogen enters, it first binds to some innate immune cells, these cells go tell our T cells and B cells that okay now we have to produce some kind of a specific immunity. So immunity is kind of a connected and this is how it starts. But when I say innate immune cells, what are those? Neutrophils, basophils and couple of more. Do they have some kind of specificity? Here I would say yes. So this was a theory proposed long back by Charles Janeway that not only in our immune cells but almost in our all body cells we can have a some kind of evolutionary conserve receptor molecules that can recognize pathogens by their pattern okay those patterns found on pathogens they cannot leave so quickly this was a very famous picture from a cell paper which the people got nobel prize they showed that one gene which is important for developmental processes, if you delete this gene, then those flies are very susceptible to fungal diseases. So this is a dead fly picture where this fungus has grown on a very high number, okay. So yeah, this gave this another theory, uh, not theory, but the results that pathogens have PAMPs, okay. So pathogen associated molecular patterns and response to that, we have receptors. And then I said that, that these receptors are present on different, different places. So if I discuss now again the specificity and diversity, if you take example of your antimicrobial peptides, antimicrobial proteins, they are expressed at different place. They kill some kind of a specific pathogen. These receptors which are present on almost every cell of our body, they also recognize pathogen. Okay, so toll-like receptor is one of the example which are the surface proteins and they recognize molecule of bacteria like LPS, okay, that is an endotoxin. So that I discussed in very great detail in last lecture. So yes, for specificity and diversity, I will give some marks to innate immunity also. So what concept I want to tell you is innate immunity doesn't only mean your skin. It doesn't only mean some kind of acid in, acid in your stomach which kills everything which goes there, okay. It is above that and the contribution towards innate immunity is done by almost every cell, alright. Yeah, then I said that apart from these cell membrane receptor, we can have cytoplasmic receptor okay now why cytoplasmic receptor is this information to just you guys to bore you and to give you more work so that you can more read and remember no it was not like that so usually in my last lecture i said that in case if this is a cell some epithelial cell some virus will come and release its rna inside the cell this rna will make dna will incorporate into our genome this is how virus works. For the first time people saw that there are some protein, okay. So in protein we have couple of domains. They found very interesting protein and they saw that, okay, these are the protein which have a RNA binding domain. Now, what the hell these cytoplasmic proteins doing into the cell cytoplasm to bind it to a RNA? then people immediately connected that okay there can be a viral infection and this protein which has a domain there it can bind to a RNA it can be a sensor for viral infection okay so this second class of innate immune receptor is called RLR or Rigai like receptors these proteins play a crucial role in viral infection so you see this result, there is this protein, it is known as a IPS1, okay. So this is the protein, it's a mitochondrial protein. 
and you see this beauty okay so this is mavs you 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 see this mavs protein okay so mavs is a mitochondrial protein now you see in evolution what kind of essential role it has played early on we were just a simple cell some kind of a bacteria started living in our cell that bacteria now today we know as a mitochondria that mitochondria plays super duper role for metabolism also for the immunity okay so this is a mitochondrial protein mouse oops okay so this is a mitochondrial protein this one and you see that if you knock down this gene so this another data here this is a knockdown of this gene okay so this is a control so your gene is intact one and two these are two si rna okay so this is a way by which the dna makes protein by mrna so you target that mrna and you delete it ultimately the protein will not be made and in this situation if these cells are infected with a ndv which is a newcastle disease virus or some kind of other virus which is a vesicle vsv these two virus response you see okay in biology hardly we see such a negative and positive data so when this gene is depleted by this sirna1 and 2 you see in control you see a very strong response okay by producing one kind of a cytokine which is interferon alpha but you see when these genes are knocked down the response is completely gone so this was one of the black and white data and this paper was published by my phd mentor okay from japan yeah yeah sirna is against this mouse protein mavs okay this protein so then what happens is that from upstream the receptor is bind is is able to bind to the viral rna but ultimately the signaling is hampered here so this was super interesting so my pi from one lab they published this paper in nature immunology which is a big journal okay other group they published in immunity a cell press based big journal so four papers came together okay almost in a difference of 1 to 2 months and all four papers today the citation is 3000 which is very big okay today my total citation is like around 1500 that one paper is was cited and all four paper people cite whenever they publish something so they say that this protein mavs is is a second molecule once this rigai at the top binds to the viral mrna okay so this is a viral mrna okay this protein binds it gives a signaling to mavs and then this signaling ultimately goes and interferon is produced and you see the level of interferon production it is decreased when this gene is not there okay so such a big story came out and today we know what is their roles so let me yeah so most of the cell they have it you know because virus they will surrounding our epithelial cells definitely they will go and infect so that's the reason yeah 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 that's what i'm telling so even your non immune cells epithelial cells they also produce interferons so previously what people had a limited understanding that innate immunity means just three four type of cells eating of a pathogen producing something no that is not the case wherever a pathogen can infect us there those cells will be able to recognize okay so this is a second class this was professor sizu wakira a big scientist there was an institute named after him in japan there is a big fellowship named after him in japan so almost for 3 4 years he was predicted to be like he will win the nobel prize but ultimately he couldn't but you see his number of citation that's what i wanted to show you guys my citation today is around 1500 see what work he has done 
that brought him citation to this number. Okay, he's a very shy guy. When he will give a talk, he will like not see. But the work what he has done is tremendous. All right. So then, yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry. Please come again. Right. It's a, it's a very good, I think, question what he has raised that let me tell you again the specificity point. Okay, so this is that he is saying, let me make this cell a little bit bigger. So you have a cell which is epithelial cell and this is the DNA, the DNA makes mRNA, mRNA makes protein and protein works, okay. This is how a system works. Now this protein is your RNA sensing protein. But you see this important thing. Your own cell is producing RNA that they will not touch. Because there is a different type of modification on your own mRNA compared to the viral RNA. Viral RNA can be of different type. It can be a single stranded DNA, single stranded RNA, positive strand RNA, negative strand RNA, double stranded RNA, double stranded DNA, right? Multiple types. Now his, his idea is that here this mRNA we block, okay? So for knockdown we block this mRNA and how do we block is? You have your mRNA, here we will add a very small RNA that is specific to this one, okay? It is not blocking everything. So every gene has a, has a very unique sequence. So you add something which will go and bind to this part. When your machinery will see that something is bound to your mRNA, they will come and they will degrade it. His question is, why your this small RNA which you are putting to block your mRNA, why this guy is not being sensed, not being sensed by the receptors? because they are very different. So when your RNA is very small, they usually don't detect. So this siRNA is hardly in a length, it is 20 nucleotide, which is very small, okay? And this was the whole research by the scientist who won Nobel Prize for mRNA vaccine. She had this question only that how come our mRNA, which is also in the cytoplasm, not being sensed, but the viral mRNA is being sensed. So you see the specificity part, okay? And today we know that including these toll-like receptors which are at the surface, so you will always see toll-like receptors at the surface, okay? They will never be in the cytoplasm. Another is your Rigai-like receptors which always be in the cytoplasm and the reason is there, okay? The virus releases the genomic material inside the cytoplasm, okay? So this is during evolution, okay? So everything will make sense if you try to understand in a comprehensive way. Then the third one is this C-type lectin. This recognizes fungal cells. So what fungal cells will have? Fungal cell will have a lot of carbohydrate moieties on their surface. And there is this protein category known as lectins. Lectin binds to the carbohydrate. So this lectin receptor also we have it that recognizes the fungal pathogen and thanks to these lectins that we don't have a disease. So in my genetics class I was teaching this subject that there are many things okay and the answer we don't know. So there was this family which was highly susceptible to fungal diseases. People tried to find out that what is the reason. Ultimately they found out that there is a mutation in this lectin which is one of the lectin known as a dectin 1. This mutation now these cells will not recognize fungal pathogen and because of that that family it, it goes into your like generation by generation that they are more susceptible to fungal diseases. Okay. Then we have this fourth category which we know as a sea gas thing. 
सी गेस्टिंग इट प्लेज अ सुपर इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इन नॉट इन पैम्प्स ऑल्सो इन द पैम्प्स बट इन केस ऑफ डैम्प्स ऑल्सो सो वट इज डैम्प या सो कंपेयर टू पैम्प द पी इज फॉर पैथोजन हियर इट इज डी डी मीन्स डेंजर एंड वट इज डेंजर इफ दिस सेम सेल इज बाय सम इंसल्ट इफ इट इज ब्रोकन एंड देन द डी एन ए कम्स आउट दिस इज अ डेंजर सिग्नल the dna should always be in the nucleus why it has came out it will be recognized as a danger associated signal okay so these are again cytoplasmic and receptors that recognizes if there is a double stranded dna in the cytoplasm okay this can also recognize if there is a double stranded dna released by some kind of a pathogen insult of your cell breakage of your cell okay the response will be always the same either the production of typhon interferons or pro inflammatory cytokine production so you see this interferon production here so for msc and phd you know that there is this cancer we know as a colorectal cancer right so colorectal cancer when it came it is a very aggressive cancer because being in you know hidden inside your body it is very difficult to find if there is a cancer or not so most of the patient when they come to the clinic for the first time the disease is already in advanced stage okay then we found out one therapy and that therapy was a pdl1 therapy that is a immune checkpoint blocker we will discuss that therapy in more detail but just to prime you guys that therapy is like cancer cells will come and they will apply a break on immune cells like okay you don't work this is a tissue damage and a wound is being repaired immune cell will say okay we will not do anything the cancer will grow then we found out this therapy and we said that if you release this break which is applied by your cancer cells the immune cells will work and they will kill the cancer this therapy we started applying it to the patient but ultimately we found that out of 100% patient only around 20% 15% it works now can you classify these 15% patient and you give this therapy to only these people not to everybody else okay that was a big challenge after a lot of research people came to know that these immune signaling here they play an important role into categorizing these 15 to 20% of patients so if in cancer there is a insult of course it happens because they want to grow even without nutrient and all that small dna is released inside the cytoplasm okay so from here the dna comes out coming out of this dna is being recognized by the sea gas and sting pathway and this guy do what it releases interferons and interferons are the one which are the which which also promote the break okay so today based on some kind of a marker which is known as a microstability inhibitor that is nothing but more dna damage more release of dna more activation of this pathway this pathway applies the break okay so this has impacted life of many many people guys by the way and it's a huge thing that based on msi high and msi low we are able to categorize these cancers and we are able to treat the right person with right therapy and the pathway involved here is segesting all right so innate immunity is not just limited to your infectious agent or anything okay it is everything so you said that the release yeah so it's again a very good question so how the release is impacted so release is that cancer cell compared to normal cells divide more right and that's why we have a big tumor so more division is actually associated with something so let's say if there is a msi which is a micro stability uh, something so msi instability 
if this instability is more the dna damage will happen more more dna damage more issues more broken dna and that dna will be released in the cytoplasm so there are these two type of cancer so msi high means more dna damage another tumors are known as a cold tumor so cold tumor is nothing but msi low they don't have that much of dna mutations and because of less dna mutation they have a less mutational burden less release of double stranded dna into the cytoplasm and ultimately that leads to this pathway interferons and then that that break okay so just remember this we will discuss in a greater detail today the market of this therapy is again i think 10 to 20 billions dollars okay so for those btx who want to establish companies and want to be let's say unicorn think about this okay so information and this knowledge is power so just just don't come here for some kind of a grades or anything if you are here learn something okay this is one graph i want to tell you that this is a mutation in one of the gene which is involved in the pathway how to read this is these are the patient survival all 100% patients are surviving today but as the time passes on x axis 10 year 20 year 30 year 40 years if there is a mutation most of the patient will die before 10 years if there is no mutation the patient will live up to 50 years okay so mutation into these pathway or any gene associated with this signaling impacts survival of people and this is a death by infectious disease okay all right now the second thing so quickly i told you that there is production of type 1 interferons and inflammatory cytokines so i always tell that inflammatory cytokines are not something goody goody okay they are dangerous that's how they are produced in the cell in a pro form they will be released in a active form by the second signal so type 1 interferons need only one signal but inflammatory cytokines need two signal okay let's say there is a activation of tlr4 alone it will not be sufficient to release pro inflammatory cytokines they will need another signal that is based on inflammasome so inflammasome is a multi protein complex and that can be sensed by you see the activators sterile activator what what does it mean it has nothing to do with the pathogen amount of atp cholesterol crystals urine crystal amount of glucose amyloid hyaluron whatever change in your cell can activate inflammation and inflammation can be the good the bad and the ugly okay so persistent activation of inflammation not with a pathogen but anything can cause a super bad disease like cancers okay second is environmental derived stuff alum silica alloy uv radiation skin irritants they can also activate inflammation okay and this molecule so what does this molecule do it will convert the pro form of inflammatory cytokine into the mature form of inflammatory cytokines so this is what the inflammasome is and of course there is a pathogen activator starting from bacteria to virus to fungus to protozoa okay this slide i will not explain you guys have to simply remember it that even in the phagocytosis where the macrophages come and eat a pathogen these receptors play a role so c type lectins when it binds to something it is a signal for macrophage to eat okay so these receptors are found on the path in in the macrophage and macrophage after binding it will activate that okay you go and eat this guy and the signalings are fairly quick okay immediately they see and they eat the pathogen it is that quick signaling another is opsonin so opsonin is nothing but a term from europe some place that you make your food tasty by putting some kind of a spices and those spices are these okay so complement is the next class topic which we will discuss in more detail and then of course binding of antibody so if antibody binds complement protein binds to the pathogen 
then it becomes more tasty for the macrophages to eat. Okay. Type of cell death. There is this two type of cell death. The first one is apoptosis. Okay. So, apoptosis is a programmed cell death. Let us say a tadpole larva is having a, some kind of a tail. During development, the tail goes away. No inflammation, no activation of immune system. All the cells which were present in the cell, they are dead. This is apoptosis. So, it is a programmed cell death, no immune activation. Another thing is called necroptosis. So, necroptosis is a sudden death. Let us say you crush something and you kill your cell. This will activate your PAMP signals, release of DNA into cytoplasm, stuff messed up, ATP concentration outside of the cell. This will activate the immune system by damp signal. Okay, so danger associated molecular pattern signal. How can you categorize that this is apoptosis versus necroptosis? This is the assay. Okay, here you have a dye which if the plasma membrane is broken, it will go inside and stain the DNA. Plasma membrane can break by two ways, either by apoptosis, which is a controlled, controlled death or necroptosis just by some kind of crushing or something. This guy will stain. So here, either your necroptosis or apoptosis, both will be stained by the PI. Another dye is called anexin. So anexin, your this plasma membrane is actually a lipid bilayer like this. This anexin protein is always found in the inner leaflet of the membrane inside of it. But when this apoptosis happens, this is a eat me signal. So this guy from inner leaflet of plasma membrane comes out to the outside and this provides a signal to the cells like macrophages like okay, I'm dying eat me, utilize my energy. Okay. So, this is a unique process where this anexin positive cell only be the apoptosis. If you see both positive, it is a late apoptosis. So, earlier late apoptosis, necrosis only, no positive staining of anexin 5. Okay. Remaining two are the immunological cell death. One is known as a pyroptosis. What is this? Pyroptosis is when your immune cell which is a macrophage is infected by some kind of a pathogen. The pathogen has infected the cell and now living inside your cell. So these inside receptor they will recognize that we are infected now we have to die and macrophages they can produce a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokine. So they will convert their all pro-inflammatory cytokine into active they will burst and die. Okay, so, this is a death of your immune cells, particularly the macrophages, highly inflammatory in nature, pyroptosis. Okay. The fourth one is more common when you have some kind of a bacterial disease. Let us say you have a bowel. In your bowel, you will find a lot of pus. It is nothing but a death of your neutrophils, which have taken the chromatin and spread it as a net. To sequester the bacteria. This is netosis. So, netosis is a death of neutrophil. Okay. What is swelling? A mosquito comes and bite and then we immediately have some kind of a swelling. That swelling happens like this. Some kind of a tissue damage, it may have some kind of a irritant or allergic bacteria. The immune cells filtration will be will increase the blood cell infiltration will increase and this will cause a redness, swelling, heat, pain and edema and extravasation. So, edema and extravasation is basically more blood will be directed there so that more immune cells can come. The last one, inflammatory response. It can be good, the bad and the ugly. Okay. The good, if the inflammation is short, it will help you in healing of your tissue and combating with the infection. But if inflammation is chronic and slow, so you see guys this one, quick goes down, it is good. If it is consistent but for a long time, it can cause severe disease, 
it happens in case of let's say hepatitis b virus infection can ultimately leads to hepatocellular carcinoma okay and then the third one is the bad one is sepsis so if your blood is exposed to some kind of microbial moiety or the whole microorganism like lps okay so lps is pamp pathogen associated molecular pattern your each and every cell of your body will start producing a lot of inflammatory cytokine that signal will go to the liver and liver will produce even more cytokine and this high amount of inflammatory cytokine most likely will kill the human okay so it can be the good the bad and the ugly so you remember this slide now immunity in plant so this let's not rush this is the last slide i will explain you in the next lecture so what type of immunity plants have it it will take 2 minutes and then guys from next lecture we will discuss the complement okay that is one of the ancient known phenomena people observe and so you read about that